Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. delegate of this union of demons, devils, shades, and spirits, plus other assorted practitioners of the ultra and the macabre. The truest maxim, perhaps, of them all is the one that says, you can't get something for nothing. Not only is it true from the ethical point of view, it is also a demonstrable scientific fact. Well then, with both science and morality on its side, why is this self-evident principle so universally disregarded? Why do so many of us try to make a full-time career of reaping without sowing? Our mystery drama, You Can Change Your Life, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Ralph Bell. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The curfew tolls the knell of parting day. The lowing herd winds slowly o'er the lee. The plowman homeward plods his weary way and leaves the world to darkness and to me. As it happens, the darkness is not only left to the poet. Darkness is available to whoever cares to make use of it. By their very nature, some deeds can only be performed in the darkness, such as the one you're about to witness. Maria Concepcion Valdez gets off the bus. She stands on the dark, fog-shrouded street corner. Where is Arturo? He always meets her here when she works late. Neither he nor she is happy that she must walk a long, lonely block at this hour. Maria smiles, and her smile is something to see. At 40, she is still slender, trim, and beautiful. Perhaps Arturo has forgotten... But how could he forget? He didn't. Arturo, did you fall asleep? Oh, oh excuse me. I, I thought you, you were my husband, Arturo. Uh, excuse me. Are you Mrs. Maria Concepcion Valdez? Oh, that's Maria Concepcion. Oh, I stand corrected. My name is Eugene Parmenter. Yes. And, and I wonder, Mrs. Valdez, do you remember me? Oh, do I... Remember you? Mm-hmm. No, I, I cannot say that I do. This would go back 11 years? 11 years ago? Mm -hmm. Oh, my. For me, that would have been another world. For me, too. Well, Mr. Parminter, what, what is it you wish? Well, it's... I, I find it inconceivable that you wouldn't remember me. Well, sir... Perhaps if you were to tell me... You changed the entire course of my life. Oh, me? Yes. But how? You judged me. Oh, no. No, that cannot be. You, you are making a mistake. You are confusing me, perhaps, with someone no, else. No, 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 no. There, there's, there's no mistake. But I have never been a judge. Uh, Indeed, I, I would never be a judge. Think back. Eleven years. A night... Filled with music, with laughter, in a great hall with brilliant light. I, I, I really... Parmenter. Parmenter. Eugene Parmenter. Do you remember me? Huh? Think. Oh, please, sir, if you will excuse me. You judge me. I, I, I must be on my way. Say my name. Eugene Parmenter. Say it. Uh, Eugene Parmenter. Now, do you remember? I, I, I... Do you remember judging me? I, I... And no. do you remember condemning me? I never condemned anybody, never! And now it is my turn. Oh, Senor, please. My turn. Please. Don't, don't kill me. Not in the knife. No. Help me. Oh. 
What do you want? I want Mrs. Gussie Valkowska. And now that you've found me... I'm Police Lieutenant Weiss. And you want to come in and talk to me? Well, since I can't stop you, let's get it over with. Leave me save you a lot of time. You want to talk to me about the murder of Maria Concepcion Valdez last night? It happened just down the street. Now, uh, did you hear anything? I didn't hear nothing because I wasn't home. Well, where were you? What's the matter? Do I need an alibi? I only wanted to ask you... Who killed her? Go ahead. Ask me. I thought you said you weren't here. It's open and shut. What are you talking about? I know who killed her. Her husband. That Arturo. Why do you say that? Why do I say that? Listen. Hear that? These walls are like cardboard. I think they are cardboard. You can hear every word they say next door. I used to sit by the wall all night. A cup of tea, some fruit, some cake, and just listen. To what? To the arguments Maria and Arturo used to have each and every night. What about? Well, you got another background, Captain Weiss. I'm only a lieutenant. You're going to get promoted because you're about to solve this case. It's the old story. What old story? They come here from Cuba 12, 15 years ago. He was kind of rich, but he was lucky to get out with a shirt on his back, you see. Well, I, I don't know. He couldn't seem to get started up here. Everything went wrong for uh, him. Mrs. Valdosco, all I want to know is why you say he killed him. Like I was saying, the only work he could get was the kind of thing that was uh, that was considered beneath his his station, like it says in the book. Well, meanwhile, she got a job and she started making more money than he did. How did you know? I've read the books, too. <laughs> so, he, he gets jealous. He says, I won't have you working in that place with all those men at night. What kind of a place was it? A bank or a stockbroker. He said he was dishonored that his wife worked at night in an office with men. And she asked, why didn't he feel dishonored that his wife had to work? Period. And he accused her of being sweet on one of the guys, and she laughed at him. And he said, if she didn't quit, he'd kill her. He said he would kill her, those words? Those exact words. When did this argument take place? The argument, in the sense that they was having a difference of opinion, had been going on for years. But it didn't start getting hot till she got this new job. Let's see, uh, last month. And you distinctly heard him say, I'll kill you. Yes, sir. And I even says to her, listen, Maria, this guy sounds like he could do it, too. But she only laughed and said, poor Arturo. And then she sighed and, and said, I may have outgrown him. Thank you, Mrs. Valdowska. Thank you very much. Lieutenant, why would I kill Maria? Why would I kill my wife? Mr. Valdez, is it true you fought? Yes, we fought, but all married couple fight. Continuously, bitterly? I... We... we what did you uh... fight about? There are those things between a man and wife which need not be discussed with strangers. We are investigating a murder. Investigate? But why question me? Mr. Valdez, your wife was murdered near the bus stop. By, by some some subhuman monster, some thief who... Her money was still in her purse. She still wore her rings and bracelets. We must discount robbery as the motive. What did you fight about with your wife, Mr. Valdez? I am not required to tell you. All right, shall I tell you? She was making more money than you. You resented it. And she was beginning to resent it, too. Your marriage was coming apart. That's a lie. I, I was a very wealthy young man back in the old country. We were allowed to take nothing with us. I never learned... Uh, I never learned how to make a living. She said, you must change your whole attitude. You must go to school, learn a trade, a profession, anything. I could not do it. Do you understand? Frankly, no. Too many generations of blue blood. Uh, but she learned. And she was becoming another person, a stranger. I I tried to keep her, but she... And so you killed her? No, 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 no. You would meet her at the bus stop every evening? Yes. The last night you didn't? No. 
Juana, I must have fallen asleep. I was awakened by the police who, who rang my bell to tell me yes, that... I know. You... I'll tell you what sounds more logical, Mr. Valdez. Last night you went to the bus stop, as usual, to meet your wife. And you had the usual argument. And in a fit of anger, you killed her. But it's not true. I wouldn't. I, I, I couldn't kill Maria Concepcion. Where were you? I was home. I told you I had fallen asleep. Had it ever happened before? Had you ever missed meeting her at the bus stop? I was, I was very tired. I, I just fell asleep. Which means you have no alibi. No, no, no. no. You, you must believe me. Now, Mr. Valdez, you could have gone to the bus stop last night. What I did. You could have waited for I had the fight, the usual fight. But I tell you, I, I was... reached that terrible point where you lost control and killed her. No. When you realized what you had done, you became horrified. You ran from the spot. What I was You I... raced I... back to your home to the security of your room. No. Now, you went to sleep. Because you wanted to believe that you had been asleep all the time. It's a lie. What do you ask me, Mr. Valdez? I'm telling you what happens to many people who commit murder. But I... I people I like you I... who are not professional criminals who will only kill perhaps once in their lives and only when they're driven beyond all endurance. No, no, I didn't kill her. I tell you, I didn't kill her. Yes. You probably believe you didn't kill her. <laughs> Lieutenant, what am I going to do? If I were you, I'd get a lawyer. Well, Mr. Palmer, I can promise you, in less than one week's time, you shall be an acceptable bridge player. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> yes, indeed. The Borden School of Bridge guarantees results. I mean, provided you can count to 13. Oh, I, I think I can handle that, Miss Borden. <laughs> oh, good. Well, it's been a pleasure to meet you. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Oh, yes, darling. Oh, well, I'm closing right now. Uh, the new student is here. Oh, well, I just have to get his name and everything. No, I won't be long. Sure thing. Bye, dear. Well, oh, now, just let me fill out this form. You said it's been a pleasure to meet me. But we have met before, you and I. Oh, have we? Oh, yes. And I remember you very well. Are you sure? Oh, yes. It was 11 years ago. 11 years? Oh, that's ancient history. Well, to you, perhaps. But to me, it's real, living, vital history. Mm. I'm trying to place you. Uh, remember me now? No. <laughs> and my name? Eugene Parmenter? Means nothing? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I suppose I should. You, uh, you uh, changed the entire course of my life. Oh, well, how can you say that? Yes, you sat in judgment. Now, I, I'm afraid I can't follow that at all. You judged me and found me wanting. Well, how is it I don't remember any of that? To you it meant nothing. Oh, no, no. But to me it was my life. You condemned me. Oh. Mr. Parmenter, are you sure you, you have the right... look at me closely. Look at me. Now, look at uh, me. Uh, sir, I I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. Now, look at me, you stupid woman. Now, see here. <gasps> no, don't. Please. Please don't point that knife at me. I'm going to kill you. Why? Why? Because you sentenced me to misery for ten years. You won't get away with it. Or perhaps I wouldn't if I used a gun. Help! You Help know me! as well as I do there's no one here. You'll be caught. With a gun, they can identify bullets. A knife leaves no trace at all. Why? Why? Look at me closely. Closely. Now, do you remember? Eugene Palmenter. Yes, I remember. Good. Now you won't die in ignorance. But I didn't do anything. You condemned me. No, no, don't, don't. <laughs> well, that's twice Mr. Eugene Palmenter has committed murder. The first time, the police found someone who could conveniently be blamed, showing that sometimes even murderers can have fringe benefits. Will Mr. Parmenter be lucky this time again? That will depend on Homicide Lieutenant Charles Weiss. As you can see, quite a second act is building up, and I shall be here with it in just a few moments. Eugene Parr.
commenter has been busy recently settling what appears to be some old grievances. What makes this of interest to the police is the fact that he has been settling them with a knife. Of course, the police don't know about Mr. Parmenter yet. Indeed, why should they? His first murder as a logical suspect, and as for his second... Now or later, Terry. Now or later, what? Now you're going to make a statement. Hey, what do you mean, a statement? Telling us how and why you killed her. Lieutenant, are you crazy? I mean, have you lost your mind? Terry, you've been cheating on her. Oh, okay, all right. You've been robbing a blind here at the school. What are you talking about? She's got you in court. She's got a lawsuit against you. Well, let me explain Well, that. what's to explain, uh, Terry? It's more than just a civil action to recover money. You could be up against embezzlement, fraud. You could go to jail. Lieutenant, let me level with you, huh? Okay, she was mad at me. Oh, come on, Terry. Let's stick to the facts. These uh... are the facts, Lieutenant. Sure, I robbed her blind, but I was entitled to all I could get. I gave her what she wanted. Fair exchange. All I know is you have the strongest of motives. She thrown you out into the street, you were on your way to jail. But don't you understand, Lieutenant? It happened all the time, regular, like clockwork. This time it went a little further. Because she was a little madder. But she calmed down like she always did. She couldn't do without me. Both of us knew it. All she was doing was letting off steam. Try that story in front of a jury. You might be lucky. You were the last one to see her alive at a club. No. No, that isn't true. The killer was the Witnesses last one. saw you in that building at 6 p.m. Well, I don't deny I was there. I'd come to make up with her. And I did. We did. And she said, run along and meet me at Larigo's restaurant. Somebody's coming by in a couple of minutes to sign up for lessons. And I did. And who was this somebody? I don't know. But he must have been the guy who killed her. Terry, you have to realize that we only have your word for the fact that you and Miss Borden had made up last night. And that you no longer had a motive. And that, uh, that there was a mysterious visitor to her office. But it's true. M- maybe there is a mad killer running around. A mad killer. Okay, uh... A couple, three nights ago, this dame was murdered on the street corner. She was stabbed, wasn't she? What are you trying to tell me, Terry? Okay, last night, Elizabeth Borden gets stabbed to death. Now, the same guy could have done it. And what was his motive? What was his motive for killing the other dame? Now, come on, give me a break, huh? Don't close it up. I know I'm hip deep in circumstantial evidence, but I tell you, I didn't kill her. Okay, Terry, think about it. No, you think about it. She was the goose who was laying the golden eggs. Why should I be crazy enough to kill her? Homicide, Lieutenant Wise. Yes, Doctor. Right. Uh, This uh, Miss Elizabeth Borden uh, was murdered the other night. Is there any way at all we can tell if it was with the same knife that killed the Valdez woman? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, then, the uh, wound. Uh, is there anything about it that could tell us if it was administered by the same person? Uh-huh. You say the position was exactly the same. I see. Yes, I know it's not conclusive. Well, okay, Doc, thanks. <laughs> Mr. Valdez, I'd like to talk to you. Why, Lieutenant? I may be able to offer you a slight ray of hope. Hope? For what? The evidence is all against you so far, but there's a chance you may not be the killer. No, I am the killer. What? You see, after you had left me the other day, I thought and thought for hours. And of course, you were right. I killed her. Are you sure? Oh, yes, yes. She she no longer loved me. That's because when we came here, she began to grow into someone else, and I had refused to grow at all. I struck out at her wildly, blindly, and so I, I killed her. 
You confess, then. Then I must have killed her. Who else would have? But you don't actually remember doing it. Oh, no, I must have blotted it forever from my memory. Another woman was stabbed to death last night. <sighs> Unhappily, there is never a shortage of maniacs. Well, it could have been a random killing, or it may be a pattern, or... Uh, uh, tell me, uh, the name Elizabeth Borden, is that familiar? Elizabeth Borden. Did you ever hear your wife mention Elizabeth Borden? Uh, yes, yes. In what connection? I, I, she, uh, Maria said, oh, it was months ago. She said, you will never guess who I ran into today, Elizabeth Borden. And? And that was all. What else did she say? Nothing. You see, women are, well, they are a race unto themselves. She said, I ran into Elizabeth Borden as if I knew who she was. Elizabeth Borden and your wife were both stabbed to death. Possibly by the same man. No, Lieutenant. I am sure I killed my wife. What do you want to look in the apartment for, Lieutenant? Ain't the case closed? Did you ever hear Mrs. Valdez speak of an Elizabeth Borden? Elizabeth Borden. Say, ain't she the one that was murdered? Hey, you figure the same guy... But, uh, well, I could have sworn old Arturo was the culprit. You never heard her mention Elizabeth Borden? Never. What are you looking for? Anything that might give me a lead. You ain't happy with Arturo, huh? As long as there's a possibility that... Hmm. You think she was good looking now? Here's the picture. I can tell by the hairstyle and the dress. It's got to be 10, 11 years ago. Look at her. Wasn't she gorgeous? Who are these other two dames in the picture? Oh, wait a minute. The one in the middle. Why does she look familiar to... The one in the middle? Yeah. I've seen that face before. Yeah, so have I. Wait a second. In the paper. Just recent. Oh, she's a good ten years younger, but it... That's got to be. Elizabeth Borden. The two of them. They're connected. Sure. The one on the left, that's Maria Concepcion... The one in the middle, that's got to be Elizabeth Borden. But the third one, the lady on the right, who's she? Hello? Are you Penelope Simpson? Oh, uh, well, my name is Eugene Parmenter. I hope you remember me. Oh, you don't. Well, uh, look, we're having a get-together of uh, the You Can Change Your Life alumni. Well, I guess alumni is not quite the word. Oh, hey, do you remember any of the other girls? Uh, look, I happen to be at the Rathskellers. It's uh, just a block away from your office. and Well, I know this is short notice, but uh, it's uh, 5 o'clock. Could you meet me here for a drink on your way home and we can talk about it? <laughs> oh, don't worry. No, I remember what you look like. How could I ever forget? <laughs> Mr. Valdez, I know you told me you never heard of Elizabeth Borden. Now, this is her picture. Does she look familiar? No, Lieutenant. The other woman in the photograph? No, 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 Lieutenant. Mr. Valdez, this is a picture of three women. Two of them have already been murdered. I have to find out who is the third lady. But, Lieutenant, you have convinced me. I must have killed Maria Concepcion. Oh, no, no, no. Now, evidently, there is someone who was out to kill your wife and this Elizabeth Borden woman, and now maybe this other. You don't know how much I wanted to kill her. You see, I am no longer a man. She supported me. Look closely at the picture. Do you know where it was taken? I don't remember. Isn't there anything about her that's familiar? <laughs> I shouted at her. I yelled at her. What do you mean? The dress. What dress? You see the dress in the picture. She bought the dress. It cost too much money. We were poor. 
Why did she want to dress? Because she's a woman. And we mean out of vain. Okay. Now, this is maybe ten years ago. You had an argument with your wife about a dress. But she bought it. And she's wearing this dress in this picture. Oh, please, please. I'm trying to remember the argument about the dress, please. Why, why did she want the dress? Why, I... I Oh, oh, yes, because she said millions of people would be looking at her. Where? Where? On the television. That's where. It was a program, uh, how you call it, a uh, giveaway program. It, uh, it was called, like, uh, I don't remember. All right, tell me everything you do remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She had written a letter. I did not hold with such foolishness. She had applied to be a judge. What kind of a judge? Uh, a judge, a judge who would judge the people, the contestants. And she was accepted, and that is why she wanted the dress. Is it possible that these women were also on the program? Is it possible? Hey, let me look again. Oh, let me try to remember. She was sitting behind a huge desk with two other women. And she was wearing this dress. Yes, it could be. These might have been the other women. Hold it a minute. Lieutenant Wise. Yes. Oh. What's her name? Penelope Simpson. Same kind of wound, huh? All right, I'll get right on over there. The name Penelope Simpson, Valdez, does that mean anything to you? Uh, no, no, Lieutenant. Are you going to put me back in my cell? Now, no. Mr. Valdez, how many times must I tell you you did not kill your wife? You're free. Now, there's no point in your coming around here anymore. Nobody's going to arrest you. She had had called me. She said she had a date for cocktails. Did she say with whom? Well, no. But, but you see, she, she was in a hurry. Mrs. Simpson, I have a photograph here, and I wonder if you No, could... I couldn't. Well, I want you to identify, if you can, two other ladies who were posing with your daughter. I'm sorry. I, I can't help you. But uh, why not, Mrs. Simpson? Because I'm blind. But you... Because I'm in this room, which I know so thoroughly, every square inch. I see. Well, this is a photo. It's very good. Must have been professionally done. It's in color. We have here your daughter and a woman named Maria Concepcion Valdez. Is that name familiar? I don't think so. And the other is Miss Elizabeth Borden. Would you know of her? Oh, Elizabeth Borden. No. Oh, wait. Oh, I, I should remember Elizabeth Borden. Why? Why should you remember Elizabeth Borden? Had your daughter ever mentioned that name? I... I think so. In connection with a television show? Oh, a TV show. Oh, no. I think... Uh, well, perhaps if you were to tell me the name of the show... Oh, I don't know the name. It was a uh, giveaway kind of thing. What, what were they giving away? Well, I don't know exactly. Well... What were they doing on the program? This is rather peculiar, you know. You're the police officer, and I'm asking the question. Well, sometimes you find out more that way. I don't know what they were giving away, but it had to do with judging. Judging? Oh. Oh, I remember. It was called... You can change your life. Thank you, Mrs. Simpson. Thank you. I'm so sorry we didn't know all this much sooner. Well, 
what is it that we do know? We know that three women who may have been on a TV program more than a decade ago have come to a violent end. And the perpetrator is a gentleman who considers himself an aggrieved party. The name of the show, You Can Change Your Life. Really? How? How was it supposed to work? Why don't you meditate until I return with enlightenment in just a few moments? of completely different backgrounds, murdered. Offhand, there is no connection between them. It could have been a mad random killer. But Police Lieutenant Charles Weiss realized that there is always a method to madness and an order to randomness. And he has succeeded in placing all three women in the same place at the same time. And your daughter was on this program, Mrs. Simpson? Yes. She had written in and she had asked to be a judge. They paid each judge $500. Oh, the floodgates have opened. I remember everything. But what does this You have can to do? change your life. Now, now who was the, uh, the. Star. Oh, you don't remember Ted Tinker? No, I, I can't say that I do. The show went off the air. Oh, Eight, nine years ago? Because Ted Tinker had a stroke. Oh, he was such a lovely person. So gentle. So kind. So humane. So involved. Well, Lieutenant, it was a great show. You know, there's a sucker born every minute. Would you uh, remember these three ladies, Mr. Tinker? Oh, look, I was on 15 years, 790 shows. I'd be on today if I didn't have to be in a wheelchair. Is there any way you could identify It could be a terrific gimmick, you know what I mean? The wheelchair bit? Look at the career Lionel Barrymore had for himself. Ah, but the agencies don't buy it. About these three ladies, Look, Mr. Lieutenant, I'm organized. Organization, that's how you run show business. Each one of my judges, she gets a picture, $500, a smile, a sincere thank you. Uh, there's a letter and a number on the back of that picture. Uh, yes, K-1. All right, in back of you, that row of drawers, the one marked K. All right, I got it. Now, there's a folder marked 1. Take it out. All right, hand it over. So, what do we got here? K is 1965. Now, uh, here we are. And one is the first show. Judges, your three ladies. Maria Conception Valdez, Elizabeth Borden, tall skinny dame, and Penelope Simpson. Uh Uh-huh. What was their uh, function on the show? They gave away 25 grand every week. And every week we had three new judges. And uh, this particular week they were the judges. How did it work? Wow, that was a sob story program. E- you mean you never watched it? Uh, no. What were you doing? Living in exile someplace? You know the ratings I had? What did they do? Every week, two creeps would come on a show. You think you run into weirdos in your business? So, these two characters each week would say how they could change their lives for the better if they had $25,000. And? And that was it. It's the gimmick. It was good for 15 years till I got sick and... And the judges, I would suppose, decided who would receive the prize, eh? Yeah, but don't brush off the genuine, authentic, grassroots appeal. I mean, these were folks who wanted to change their lives, to become something greater, something better, to be a credit to their country and their community. Uh, Don't try to sell me. I'm not a sponsor. K-1. We had these three women as judges, and the contestants were... Oh, you should have seen the neck on this guy. He was one of the contestants. I called him Ichabod Crane. The audience broke up. What was his name? Uh, Jerry Dawson. And the other guy, a very quiet-looking creep named Eugene Palmer. Who was the winner? The jury decided in favor of the neck, Jerry Dawson. And the loser was... Uh... Eugene Palmer. 
On what basis did the ladies decide? Well, they're all three dead, so I guess we'll never know, eh? Well, what kind of stories did the contestants tell? Stories? Do I know? Do I remember? Great tragedies, a chance to begin anew. Are you saying I had a sore loser that night and he was mad enough to kill the judges? No, it's only a hypothesis. So why does that crumb wait ten years? I don't know. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. I remember. He went to jail. For what? It was a month after the show. I remember. It was in the paper. He stole a lot of money from some company he worked for. And he went to jail? He got ten years. Which means he just got out and just in time to kill those three ladies. Hey, sure, it figures. He was sore at them. Ten years. That's a long jail term just for stealing. Well, there was some assault wound up in it, too. You see, when the cops come after him, he put up a fight. Pretty violent guy. I remember he started a bad scene after the show was over. I had to call the cops. Parmenter. Eugene Parmenter. <laughs> Lieutenant Wise. Yeah. Okay. Inspector, we got a tape of that show. We got a great description of the guy. We've circulated it all over. Every cop has an eye out for him. All we can do now, Inspector, is wait. Yeah, I'm staying with it. I knew this was the right place when I heard your voice, Lieutenant. Oh, Mrs. Simpson. Here, uh, let me help you do a chair. Thank you. What can I do for you? Oh, it's been a month, Lieutenant, hasn't it? Since the murder of my daughter and those two other ladies. I'm sorry. We're doing the best we can. Crimes are solved by routine. I don't think you will ever find Eugene Parmenter that way. That's the only way we have. Why were my daughter and the others killed? Because some psychotic held them responsible for his failure. Precisely. And he had to have his revenge. Why shouldn't he drop quietly out of sight, even leave the country, disappear forever? We hope that won't happen. I have a suggestion. You have? Yes. Why should Mr. Parmenter believe his work is finished? Well, because he's already murdered those three women who he believes had wronged him. Yes, but suppose he can be convinced he made a mistake. I don't follow that. Suppose it should turn out that he had killed them for nothing. Then what? I still don't understand. Suppose he were to discover that the judges on that program were only figureheads, window dressing, that the decision was really made by Mr. Ted Tinker, who secretly conveyed the verdict to the judges. And that would make Mr. Parmenter so furious that he would attempt to murder Mr. Tinker? Yes. You could guard Mr. Tinker night and day and thus catch Mr. Parmenter in the act as he attempts... Uh, Mrs. Simpson, we can't do that. We are restricted by various constitutions. Very well. I shall do it myself. Oh, now, Mrs. Simpson... I shall tell the reporters that my daughter gave me the inside information that it was Mr. Tinker who really made the decision. But that's not true. How would anyone know? I say my daughter told me. Can you prove she didn't? Well, Mrs. Simpson, we can't stop you. <laughs> Glad to be on the evening news over your station. Penelope told me everything about that old time show. They were not really the judges. They were just there to look pretty. Mr. Ted Tinker told them what to do. That's not true. That is not true. Mr. Tinker decided in advance who the winner would be. That is a lie. And the girls, of course, were willing to go along with it. You're lying. I suppose it can be told now. 
This poor, demented man, he killed them for nothing. What? What do you mean I killed them for nothing? I killed them because they wouldn't give me a chance to win. I kill. I kill them for nothing. Oh no! No, it was Ted. Ted Tinker. He fooled me. He was the one. He was the one who could have changed my life. He was the one. I am going to sue your station for every nickel you got. And that stupid reporter. I never said who the winner should be, and I can prove it. I got witnesses, my director, my scriptwriters. You're in bad trouble, baby. The next voice you hear will be my lawyer. Hello, Mr. Tinker? What? Who are you? Huh? How'd you get in here? You don't remember me? I'm Eugene Permander. No. No, you ain't. I remember what you look like. I changed my face just enough. But people who stare hard... Listen, I don't care what you heard on TV. It was the dames. They decided I had nothing to do with it. You should have overruled them. After all, my case... My case was so obviously more worthy. Now, look, don't do anything crazy. I said, I said, I, I needed the money in order that I may not drop into the searing fires of shame. Now, I said I needed it to right a wrong, and everybody laughed. I didn't laugh. Believe me, I was moved. I cried. Then, then why didn't you help me? Why didn't you give me the money that could have saved my reputation and kept me from prison? Because the game had to be played by the rules, and the judges said... You were the judge. No, no, no. It isn't true. Believe me, she's a senile old lady. Can't you see what she's doing? She's setting you up. Hey, look, put away the knife, beat it fast, and you're in the clear. I won't even say you showed up. Oh, no, no, not until you pay the price. You're crazy. Hey, no, no, don't come near me. Don't you right. Right. Uh, Let go of the knife. Uh, Palm it let go of the knife. Uh, let go. Drop it. <laughs> That's but better. He was the one. He, he was the one I had to kill. The others, they were a mistake. I, I, I'm sorry. They... Yes, we're all sorry. There they, Jim. Get the cops on him. All right, take him down. I'll, I'll come out of jail one day, Ted Tinker. Oh, you'll pay the price. Hey, Lieutenant, did you set this up? No, Mrs. Simpson arranged it all by herself. We simply had to protect you in case of danger. I'm going to sue her in the station for every nickel that... Although, you want to know something? She guessed it. She's right. I did call all the shots. That fool, he killed all those poor dames for nothing. Which is what most murders are done for. Nothing. Considering death is so final, couldn't there be a better way? Well, I have suggestions for many better ways, but first you listen to some messages, and then I shall return. My name is Ebenezer Scrooge. Have you got a candy for me? Our name is Shrafts, and have we got a candy for you. So roll your eyes and set your tummy. Lick your lips, cause yummy, yummy, yummy. Have we got a candy for you? A chocolate cream and a cherry dream. A jelly slice and a drop with spice. A crispy nut and a coconut. A caramel and a nun. Whether you like your candy sweet or sour, hard or soft, crispy or creamy, Schraff's has it all wrapped up for Christmas. From a little bag of Schraff's Starlights to a gold chest of Schraff's Chocolates. Well, pat my tummy. Have we got a candy for you? From Schraff's. Chock full of nuts, the heavenly coffee comes in just one grind. Makes perfect coffee every time, no matter how you make it. Whether you use the old-fashioned percolator or any of the new automatics, Mr. Coffee, Norelco, West Band, Bun, or any other coffee maker, Chock full of nuts is the only coffee that gives you that perfect heavenly flavor in any of them. 
Chock full of nuts, all method grind coffee is a blend of the world's most expensive coffees in one grind that makes heavenly coffee in any coffee maker. Something for nothing. A change of the entire direction of your life in one grand moment. Manna from heaven. No, it doesn't happen. And yet, how many hopes are based on it? How many people wait breathlessly for the big win? The long shot. The lottery ticket. And thus do their lives flow silently away. The only thing you should wait for regularly is this program, seven times each week. Our cast included Ralph Bell, Earl Hammond, Bryna Rayburn, Robert Dryden, and Martha Greenhouse. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown.